work from home has become a bit of a scapegoat for poor corporate productivity, with bosses and CEOs blaming the shift to working from home for being why their stock prices are lagging, or while they're not innovating, or why it is that collaboration appears to have decreased, at least in their mind. There's a concern that when people are working from home, they're just watching Netflix, or they're shirking, or they're doing other things other than working. Or at least that's how some CEOs are presenting it. After all, we've seen a surge in the number of companies forcing their employees to go back to work. For example, Nike recently did so, as did Amazon. And as Amazon particularly stressed that while there was a perception during the pandemic that people could work from home for two, three days per week, that perception was no longer going to be the case, and employees would need to return to the office for a full five days per week. And the Amazon CEO specifically said, we want to operate like the world's largest startup. That means having a passion for constantly inventing for customers, strong urgency, high ownership, fast decision-making, scrappiness, and frugality. Deep connected collaborations need to be joined at the hip with your teammates when inventing and solving hard problems, and a shared commitment to each other. And he asserted that returning to the office was the way to achieve this. He asserted, therefore, that people were not really doing this properly at home, and they needed to be next to each other in the corporate office five days a week to get that level of innovation. Similarly, John Donahue, the CEO of Nike, asserted that when people were working from home, they simply weren't innovating adequately for them to be able to create the drive and changes that were necessary within the corporation, and subsequently ordered a return to work four days per week. This was an increase from the three days per week that it previously had. And this increase to four days per week was on the back of large, large stock price decline. However, of course, notably for Nike, this return to the office didn't really do very much about their rather precarious stock market position, and they did underperform the broader market despite returning to the office. It does, however, beg the question of whether there's merit to this return to the office mandate, or whether there are some issues that we really need to consider. And to this end, there are a couple of surveys that are actually rather interesting about this, and there's also some academic research that's poked into this, albeit not very much out at the moment. For example, there was a working paper by Yu Yu Ding and Mark Ma of the University of Pittsburgh. They analysed factors that might drive a return to the office mandate, and also whether or not that had some downsides. And lo and behold, they found that a return to the office mandate was often associated with poor stock market performance. CEOs potentially scapegoating working from home for the poor performance at the company. And in reality, they should be looking at other factors going on with corporate performance, not just the work from home. Furthermore, Mark Ma and Yu Ding highlighted that when there was a return to the office, there was lower worker satisfaction, lower perceptions of work-life balance, lower satisfaction with their organization. In essence, employees were less happy at the office and potentially they would therefore exert less overall mental effort when working for the organization, which could have some downsides. Another way of phrasing that is that if people are less happy at the workplace and they are less happy going to the office, then in a market where there's a very tight labor market, they might demand more money in order for them to go into the office. Now clearly, if there's a lot of unemployment, they can't demand more money, but if unemployment is low and workers have a lot of outside opportunities, they could. And this means your higher performing workers are the ones that can really leave when there's a return to the office mandate and they have other outside options, whereas the other employees might be less able to do so. So to that end, Deloitte actually did a survey in relation to this. And Deloitte found that 59% of millennials and Gen Zers wanted to look for remote work when conducting their job search. That is, for at least a large number of employees, it was a factor. Now, one can debate about whether those are the high-performing employees or the not-so-high-performing employees, perhaps a mix of the both. However, if that means that you are forcing people to go into the office and at least some of the high-performing employees require some degree of hybrid working for them to even consider your job, you're potentially going to lose out on some of those employees. A company might argue that you need those employees to be in the office to get the most out of them, but nevertheless, one is clearly going to have access to a reduced labor pool if you demand people being in the office. Furthermore, and slightly ironically, Atlassian did a survey of some of the Fortune 500 executives. In this survey by Atlassian, they found a few interesting things. Firstly, 
literally every one of the leaders in their survey reported their team was working in a more distributed manner, regardless of whether they have a return to the office policy or not. Secondly, 99% of their survey respondents said that distributed work was only going to increase in the future, not decrease. Again, regardless of whether they have a work from home policy or not. And then finally, three times more executives or respondents reported how teams work was more important than where they work. That is the mode of engaging in collaboration or innovation was more important than exactly whether people were in the office or at home or overseas or whatever the case might be. Which suggests, at least based on that survey, that some of the return to the office mandates are not really quite as necessary as is being made out. Or at least they might be targeting something else. It might be executives trying to look for a reason, a scapegoat, other than their own performance for what is driving the poor stock price performance or the staleness of corporate innovation at the organization. Now, there are concerns, however, about productivity and about whether working from home is perhaps less productive than going into the office. However, here we're often looking at extremes, working from home all the time versus going to the office all the time as compared to perhaps a hybrid mode of work. Nevertheless, there is some evidence that when people are working from home, they're actually achieving less per hour. Perhaps that's because the employees aren't quite as motivated when they're at home, or they don't have someone watching over their shoulder, or maybe it's just a perception of productivity that is going on here. Furthermore, while employees are saving some time on commuting, and some of them are actually adding this to the workday, this to some extent is offset by a reduction in productivity. There's also some evidence that when employees are working from home, they have fewer connections with other employees of the workforce, creating a more siloed or a narrower network effect. And as a result, they're either collaborating less, they're diffusing less knowledge to other collaborators or other employees, and perhaps learning it a little bit less from those other employees. And this might potentially drive a little bit less innovation. So to this end, there's also some evidence that employees in a fully remote team generate fewer breakthrough innovations than those who are not fully remote. There are further concerns about mentoring or the lack thereof in a fully remote environment. That is, you don't have as much face-to-face -face connection with your superior, and they're less able to direct how one works, and one is less able to learn how they manage a team. And therefore, you can't observe how they're managing a team, you can't really learn how to manage a team yourself, and therefore the whole leadership training perspective of it slightly reduces over time as well. However, there's some evidence that hybrid working can in fact be at least effective, and at least not too detrimental, allowing employees to perhaps work from home two or three days a week and go into the office for days of real work where they really need to collaborate, and where those days in the office are structured around the type of collaboration that is really very necessary and very useful. So for example, there's some evidence from the US Patent Office that in fact that was beneficial, and that's pre-pandemic evidence that wasn't even reliant on the shift to working from home and all of what happened during the pandemic period. And indeed, there's some evidence that as employees and teams become more used to working remotely, more used to collaborating at a distance rather than in person, they actually get better at doing so. And therefore, while there might have been a slight reduction in productivity when teams were initially forced to work from home and forced to work remotely, that productivity discount can decrease as employees and teams fall into a pattern that ultimately works for them. And at least in the innovation space, that can be productive because it might enable more nimble communication over time and might enable more collaborations with more people at a distance. So rather than just collaborating within your own office, you're collaborating with people in offices in other states or in other countries, which can in fact increase knowledge diffusion. I know that in my own personal work, a lot of the people I work with are in entirely different countries in different time zones. And being in the office is completely orthogonal to how much work and collaboration I'm doing with those people in different locations. So one needs to really consider the nature of the work that is being done and the way in which that remote work is being handled and also the way in which that remote work is being communicated and to some extent monitored in inverted commas. So to this end, Outlashion also had some tips for improving working from home that companies like Amazon or Nike might want to consider. For example, they highlighted that time boxing calendars around key objectives is incredibly important, enabling employees to focus on that particular objective rather than just time boxing things around meetings or calls or things, just eat up time but don't necessarily achieve an objective per se. Furthermore, getting employees to evaluate themselves 
at the end of the day on how much they have achieved in relation to that objective can also be useful because it enables employees to track their progress, thereby enabling them to better justify what they are doing to their supervisors and enabling supervisors to better monitor what they are doing. At least according to Atlassian, when employees were doing this, there was 16% more goal clarity, a 30% boost in workforce sustainability, and 31% increase in progress toward top priorities in a given week. Atlassian finds that how you manage people effectively is very much as important as exactly where those people are actually working. But of course, there's no one-size-fits-all solution here. And indeed, it could be a hybrid model, can be a very useful approach here, whereby employees meet periodically to meet up with one another, knowledge exchange with one another, and actually meet people so they can form teams that ultimately work remotely over time. That is, people will form their initial connections in person, and then they can leverage and expand upon this with their remote workforces. Because it is, of course, difficult to form a remote team or remote group fully remotely from the beginning. But nevertheless, we are seeing companies trying to prioritize a return to the office. One might wonder in some cases whether this is an attempt to shift blame and shift attention from what is going on with the underlying fundamentals of the company, and whether working from home is being blamed for other issues that are going on with the organization. Let me know your thoughts about working from home in the comments below.